virtual vectula. My name is Oscar, and in this particular video I'd like to talk with you about a synthetic armor set by Odeo that maybe have recently sent to me to play around with. There's a very big chance that you've already seen it show up in some of the shorts that I've been making recently, and people have been asking me questions how I like it, whether I would recommend it or not. And what I'd like to do in this video is highlight one particular aspect that I think uh, is actually very good about this armor. Now, up front, I will say that I don't think that synthetic armor can ever be truly a substitute for steel armor. However, um, it has a couple of properties that I think make it very interesting for people who are serious about armor fencing or for clubs. And one of them is the relative ease with which you can put this synthetic armor on as opposed to putting on the steel armor. So, for this video, I'd like to invite you to get dressed for battle with me, and we'll be following along the rather famous 15th century poem that's called How a Man Shall Be Armed at His Ease So That He May Fight on Foot. And we'll be doing a little bit of a modern adaptation to that. So, without further ado, let's get ready for battle. They shall have no shirt upon them, but a rash guard of breathable material. It must be well fitted, and upon it must be some cool looking artwork. And on the throat, the guard should be made of sturdy hard plastic. Also, a pair of fencing pants of 350 newton rated fabric, and the arming points on it must be threaded through the loops at the waist, and a sturdy cup must be worn underneath. Upon their shins shall be a pair of colorful socks. Also, a pair of fencing shoes with flat soles. Then, you must first set on the leg plates. Alright, so I'm just going to break the nerdy manuscript voice here for a little bit, because the original poem does a huge time skip by simply listing the order in which you put on the pieces of armor and not much else really. So the legs of this set consist of several parts that can be tied together with arming points. There's also some extension pieces, so if you have long legs like I do, you can make the set a bit longer to fit your needs. I have the whole thing already assembled, and then I simply just fasten the buckles and the leg plates I tie to the loops on my spare pants with arming points. So next comes my old fencing jacket. I've since replaced it with a new one of the same model, uh, and this allows me to reuse my old jacket for armor fighting. So what I did is I sewed a bit of leather about the shoulders to hold the arming points, which allows me to tie the arm plates to the jacket. Now, if you don't have anything like that, you really don't want to waste your current fencing jacket, of course it's also possible to tie the arm plates to the straps on the chest plate. But I find it more comfortable, if at all possible, to tie the arm plates to your jacket. This may be a bit of a finicky process, but here's something you can do that makes your life infinitely more easy. Tie the spoiler to the jacket and then also fasten the straps on their loosest setting to the sleeves of your jacket. And then once you put the whole thing on, it goes quite easily and all you have to do then is simply tighten the straps to the desired length. That means we move on to the torso. You can put it on your chest plate first and it just snaps into place. The back plate comes after that and I found it's most comfortable to first fasten the belt around the waist so that the whole cuirass sits just right. You can definitely tighten this strap quite a bit as you want it to hang mostly from your waist. This whole set may be lighter than steel because it's synthetic but you will definitely feel it in your shoulders if you wear it too loose. And now comes the really awkward bit fumbling for your shoulder straps. In this particular case, I managed to get the straps to be folded completely into the back plate, so I really set a challenge for myself today. This is ultimately the hardest part of putting the armor on. So if at any point you would like to get some assistance, this would be about it. That said, you can definitely get there yourself with some effort, so that's pretty nice.
Finally, the original medieval instruction tells you to first put on gloves and only then your helmet. But that assumes that you have a squire handy. So here we have to first put the fencing mask on. The Cobra mask that I have goes along quite well with this synthetic armor set and it has elastic straps in the back, which I can reach with some effort admittedly. So having done that, finally we take the gloves, pick up the sword, and you're now ready to do battle in your fencing hole. And that is pretty much how you can put it on a synthetic set of armor relatively quickly. And as you'll see, it's also quite doable to do that all by yourself. Now, if the synthetic armor piqued your interest, head on over to the MediF Instagram page because they have let me know that from the 22nd of March of this year, they'll be hosting a giveaway where a couple of lucky winners will be able to get their hands on discount vouchers for the synthetic armor. And for the rest, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I hopefully will see you for the next one. Cheers.